The film takes place 45,000 years ago, just after modern humans began to settle in some regions of Europe. At this period, hunting other animals was the only source of sustenance, because cultivation had not yet been established. Humans divided into small groups and set out to find food, water, and shelter over great distances. Only those who were the fittest could survive in this harsh world. The next scene takes us deep inside a cave, where six people dressed in the manner of the Middle Ages are gathered around a fire. Adam is the group's fearless alpha male leader. His siblings, Ger, his brother, and Heron, his son, seem to get along well. The eldest member is a man by the name of Odal, who, for some reason, is never happy. The next woman is Avenue, who is also Adam's partner and is also pregnant. Bea, a young lady, is the group's last member. It was while they were going through the woods that she lately joined the group. They gave her equal dietary treatment and treatment at first. Now, though, they just have her handle the majority of the work. Jer is the only person who treats her nicely, possibly because he has a crush on her. The group is currently going through a really difficult time, because they haven't eaten in days. As a result, they are now extremely frail, especially Avenue, who is currently in her seventh month of pregnancy. The following morning, they pack their bags and leave for their journey as soon as the sun comes up. Adam announces that they are heading to some hills in the distance as they travel. He tells them that there are many caverns, in the hills where they may stay warm at night. They are a veritable paradise since they also have a large number of animals and other essentials of existence. The gang is pleased to hear this and begins to walk with greater resolve. Adam and his brother Jer eventually break away from the gang in search of food. They descend a steep hill and soon find a big woolly mammoth carcass. But now there are just bones because all the tasty parts have been consumed. The boys become afraid when they learn that something far larger than a mammoth is prowling these areas. They travel a little farther and come to a location where they can see the expansive woodland. Naturally a little bit daring, Jer advises that they take the forest trail since it will save them a great deal of time. In addition, he thinks they'll find plenty of animals there that they can eat. Adam, on the other hand, fiercely objects, claiming the woodland is dangerous. Whatever killed the mammoth is definitely lurking there, in his opinion. Even if it takes them a few more days, he promises that they will go the entire length of the forest. The brothers return empty-handed to the rest of the gang that evening. In order to prevent panic, they choose not to disclose the existence of the dead mammoth. They build a fire and spend the night outside because there are no caves in the area. A short while later, the gang begins to hear terrifying sounds coming from the distance. Adam and Jer instantly believe the mammoth's demise was caused by the same hunter animal. They seize their weapons and get ready to battle whatever is hiding in the shadows. But the young kid, Heron, is taken just as they become preoccupied. Adam, who is devastated, tries to pursue the attacker, but the others stop him, claiming it would be too risky. They reassure him that it will be much safer to search for Heron in the morning. As the sun rises in the following scene, the party departs to locate the young kid. Adam, a skilled hunter, follows the animal's trails and eventually discovers Heron's clothing. He discovers no blood in it, just a gooey black liquid. He is encouraged that his son is still alive because of this. The crew doesn't stop following the footprints until they get to the forest edge. When Adam realizes his son has been brought inside, he takes out into the wilderness without thinking, and the others catch up with him. They eventually reach a location where a substantial amount of bones, gets, and dead animals have been stacked up. They hear an animal nearby screeching before they can get something to eat. The party flees farther into the forest out of fear, until they are lost for sure. They choose to build a fire and set up camp here because it is becoming really dark now. The elderly man, Odal then begins blaming Bea as usual, saying that their bad luck began the moment she showed up. He proposes that they expel her from the group as soon as possible, but as the others consider their options, the enigmatic beast startles them once more. Adam tosses his spear in that way as the commotion gets closer. However, it misses the mark, showing how nimble this animal is. Adam makes the courageous decision to face the animal by himself, at this critical moment. As the gang's leader, he is aware that he needs to take immediate action to save the group. In an attempt to kill the monster, he then takes out another spear and goes into the shadows. Unfortunately, this proves to be a fatal error when something attacks Adam from behind when he turns to face the other way. The others in the group hear his frantic screams, but they are too terrified to intervene. After the screaming eventually stops, Ger dashes inside to find his brother. Somehow, he locates him and returns him to the vicinity of the fire. However, the moment the group sees his face, they know he won't make it. It becomes out that the attacker severed his face and pierced multiple vital organs. Then, Bea takes a sharp piece of rock and uses it to stab Adam, ending his suffering. The group is totally heartbroken as a result of this occurrence. 
Avenue collapses to the ground due to excessive hunger, and the trauma of losing her companion. Bea has an unconventional suggestion at this point. She proposes that they consume Adam's corpse. Although it is obvious that the other members are appalled, they nevertheless concur because they have nowhere else to go. After that, Bea cuts slices of flesh off of Adam's body, which they fry and eat. The only person who does not endure the agony is Gur, Adam's brother. The following morning, as the sun rises, Gur assumes command of the party and makes a vow to lead them out of the forest. But after walking for hours upon hours, they eventually arrive at the same location. Odal then develops a superstitious idea of his own. He thinks that because they have invaded its territory, the hideous animal is chasing them down. In response to the other's question about his proposal, Odal irrationally suggests that they sacrifice one of them. Because Bea is the only outsider in the group, this causes everyone to turn to stare at her. Then, they try to detain her by grabbing her from three different angles. Bea kicks Gur during the commotion, causing him to smash his head on a rock and pass out. However, the two that are left are still able to pull her away and restrain her against a rock. The monster is then called out by Odal, who wants it to come out and eat the girl. The same horrifying screeches can be heard in the distance minutes later. Odal feels so terrified that he instantly freezes, giving Bea the opportunity to flee. Odal and Avenue gather their weapons and get ready to face the monster together because they have nowhere else to go. However, he backstabs her at the last second by piercing her abdomen with his knife. Odal then begs the monster to emerge by chanting, take her, over and over. However, Avenue pushes him with the last of her power, breaking his leg as he slips. They are both seriously hurt now and are unable to protect themselves. After that, the action shifts to the wee hours of the morning, when Gur eventually wakes up. He cautiously stands up and looks around for his pals, but he can't see very far due to the dense fog. It takes some time for him to see the elderly man, who is laying on the ground. As Gur approaches him, he is abruptly pulled to the ground by someone. Comes out that Bea is attempting to keep an eye on this enigmatic creature. It eventually shows up and ascends to the peak of Odal shortly after. The latter is so terrified by this that he dies right away. Bea, meantime, decides to face the beast because she has had enough. She lures it in the direction of her friend using her as bait. Bea attacks the creature from behind and knocks it to the ground just as it is about to reach Gur. When she takes off its mask, she reveals something shocking. They are all afraid of a hunter although he is neither a monster nor a beast. In reality, the woman is a Neanderthal, a near relative of modern humans. After giving each other a long look, the insane woman turns to flee. Eventually, the other two follow her and succeed in leaving the forest. However, they fail to locate the Neanderthal woman, giving her the opportunity to escape. Gur and Bea argue about what to do next in the scenario that follows. He advises them to go back to their original location and attempt to reproduce. But Bea's goal is to pursue the Neanderthal. She thinks that these people are far more developed than us, that they have already discovered new ways to hunt and gather food. Gur believes it's a risky approach, but Bea says it's better for them to die trying because they will eventually starve to death. After hearing this, Gur is eventually persuaded, and they begin to heed the Neanderthal woman's instructions. They hike for hours across treacherous rivers, and high hillsides until they reach a location with numerous caverns. The two then make the decision to separate and explore the various areas of the location. However, Bea is attacked by a Neanderthal man, as soon as she steps into one of the caves. He starts choking her after pinning her to the ground. Bea appears to have passed away, and loses consciousness a few seconds later. However, this proves to be a trap, since the instant the man lets go, she stabs him in the neck with a sharp rock, murdering him viciously. After that, Bea continues exploring the tunnel until she finds herself in a room that is blazing. She is shocked to discover that Heron is the same boy who was abducted before. He inquires as to his father's whereabouts, but Bea is unable to respond. A Neanderthal woman brandishing a weapon suddenly enters the room to scare her away. Bea also takes a log of fire and lets out a loud scream. As soon as he hears the disturbance, Gur runs to assist his friend. However, he is stunned to see his nephew alive when he enters the room. This gives the insane woman permission to strike him in the head repeatedly with a blunt implement. Then she hits him again, and again until he gives up. Terrified, Bea lights. The room's dry animal pelts on fire and flees with Heron. They manage to climb to the top, and emerge through the small opening. A few seconds later, the Neanderthal woman tries to push herself out of the crevice as the entire cave catches fire. She can't, however, because she is too large. Heron tries to assist her as she begs for assistance desperately in her own tongue, but Bea remembers what the woman did to her group, so she takes a rock and kills her with a bludgeon. The mother had treated Heron like her own child, 
Therefore Heron is distraught by what has just transpired. However, he eventually calms down, when Bea admits that she killed his father. When the two, enter a different area of the cave in the last scene, they discover a number of drawings on the walls, a lot of food, and other contemporary items.